Hi everyone, welcome to Lego Land. My name is Mark. In today's video, I'm going to be chatting about the automated Lego construction site that I created using Lego Technic models. But before I get into all that uh, cool stuff, I want to talk about the, kind of the genesis of the project and how I kind of came up with with this, uh, with this fun stuff. So um, the first thing I did, I was actually a couple of years ago, I was interested in, in getting a model to build that had, you know, gears and wheels, remote control, something like that. And I came across the Lego Technic series and I decided to buy this. So here it is. This is the uh, Volvo 3 L50, L350F wheeled loader. And it's pretty sweet, it comes with four motors, remote control. It's got fully functional four wheel drive and just an awesome piece of machinery. So that thing is this right here, the final product. So here is the loader and a very, very cool device. I'll, start, I'll run this in a second here. But uh, before I do, uh, when you get this, it comes with this little infrared controller. So you can control you know, turning and going forward and backwards and moving the loader up and down and things like that. And this communicates with these little infrared controllers and these infrared controllers are on the model. So after we built this, I'm like, wow, wouldn't it be cool to control this with your phone? And so I looked online and I came across this company called Esprit. And I think they're in Belarus or some, some place overseas. And they make this little thing right here. So this is an Esprit. And what that does is it's compatible with Lego motorized functions. And what it does, it's a Bluetooth controller and Esprit has come up with an app on your phone. And so what you can do is you can get rid of the infrared controls that come with it, plug the motors into the Esprit, and then the Esprit plugs into the battery pack, the Lego battery pack on the model. And then you can control the model with your phone. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll bring up uh, up on the screen here, since it might be a little hard to see on the on the video, I'm going to bring up the Esprit app on my phone. So it's loading here. And I'm going to turn this on. And then bring up the control panel. And so you can kind of see the control panel here. Um, with it, I'll bring it up on the screen and show it to you, uh, so you get a little better look at it. But you can control all the functions: forward, you know, forward, back, turning, things like that. Moving the loader. Let's bring it back a little bit here. You can see the loader moving, going up. I mean, just a lot of, lot of cool stuff. So anyway, so that was cool. So now I have a fully functional model that I can control with my phone with Bluetooth. And so pretty nice. So after I built this and after I got the S brick and controlled it with uh, that, let me shut this off. Pop that over here. If you look at the box that the uh, Volvo came in, let's bring it back up. Here it is. There's the box on the back of it. There is a picture of a dump truck. And the cool thing with this model is, is you can either build the loader or you can repurpose it and or build a dump truck. And so, of course, what do you do when that's the case? You buy another model, another whole set, and you build the dump truck. So you have a loader and a dump truck. So that's what I did. And of course, along with that, I got an S brick for that. So over here, we'll bring over the dump truck. So here's what you can build. Um, repurposing the loader model into a dump truck. And um, it's pretty neat. Lego has their these massive manuals that they give you on how to put everything together with this. So it's a very impressive build on uh, getting this stuff constructed. So now I've got the loader and let's uh, let's rev this thing up here. And again, this has the S brick in it as well. And let's go and control that from our phone. And some more controls, you know, with that, you know, forward, back, and then controlling the, uh, the dump bed going up and down. Hours of entertainment. So good. So, so 
after I kind of got these two built with the S brick, I'm a lot of fun with them and playing around with scooping up ping pong balls and dropping them in the bed. And two people can, you know, have, uh, can be doing one, each phone controlling each model. I was thinking to myself, wouldn't it be cool to program an automated construction site where the loader would go around, search for ping pong balls, scoop them up, automatically find the dump truck, load them in the dump truck, and the dump truck would drive away without any human interaction, all from you know, a program I would create on the computer. So I'm like, well, how, how would I do that? Okay, I would need to figure out how to now integrate with the Bluetooth on these and, and kind of figure out all that protocol on my computer. But I would also need, well, as these things are rolling around the floor, how do I know what their position is? You know, because they don't have any signals and things like that. So that brings me to another model I created, actually a little robot I created, which kind of led me down a path to try to figure all this stuff out. So let me show you that. Move this over here. So with that was, I created this. Well, I bought this little robot kit and the robot kit um, came with the motors and the wheels. And it also came with an Arduino board and Arduino for those folks who do a lot of kind of home robotics or, or, or electronics, it's uh, an easy to program board that can control motors and um, a lot of different things and connect to Bluetooth and stuff like that. So what this robot did, it's kind of deconstructed right now because I use the parts of it for, uh, for the project here. But what this motor would, uh, this robot would do is it would roll around the floor and it would chase um, colored balls. So if you put a colored ball in front of it, it would race against it and, and find it. And what was on it was this here. So here's the camera I pillaged from it. So this here is called a pixie camera and called um, sold by, I forget the name of the company, but it's called the pixie cam. And what the pixie cam does is it picks up colors and it tells you where that color is in an XY coordinate system. And so this camera was on here and it had a pan tilt mechanism. And this was then connected to the Arduino board, which is now in here now, my little box, which I'll talk about this in a second. Um, and then I programmed the Arduino board to, you know, process the data from the Pixie camera and then steer the robot around to chase the ball. So as you roll the ball around the floor, the robot would chase, uh, chase it like a cat would. So, so then that got me thinking is, okay, how can I now use the technology from here to, to satisfy my automated, uh, my automated construction site? And the thing I realized with the Pixie camera that's on here is not only does it sense colors or just kind of colors like this, it also senses color codes. And what a color code is, is something like this. So the camera, you can program it to to sense up, uh, to pick up color codes. And so when it senses this color code and it's looking at this, it will tell me the X, Y coordinate it is, but also it's gonna tell me its orientation. And the orientation thing is really important because I need to figure out the orientation of the Lego models. Are they facing forward, you know, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, you know, 90 degrees, who knows where. So I'm like, okay, so initially I had like the camera situated like this on my little robot here. What if, I put this camera on the ceiling and then these color codes on the top of the Lego models, then I could sense where they were. And the last kind of piece of the puzzle there, I'm like, well, I need to send the data from the Arduino board here to my computer. And luckily I had a little, um, um, this robot model came with a Bluetooth, uh, a Bluetooth card on it, which is this. And so, okay, now I can send Bluetooth so I can send data now to my computer. So now I really have three Bluetooth streams going to my computer, one from the camera and then one from each of the Lego models. Okay, so that kind of sets the stage for my programming. So I started to program this on my computer using Microsoft Visual Studio. And I was working with the uh, Bluetooth protocol to get the SBRIC going and I started, I was able to control the, uh, the models moving backwards and forwards and things like that. And during that process, a new Lego model came out, of course. And um, that was this, the beast from the east. This is the Liebherr 
9,800. And this thing is a beast. It is what over 4,100 pieces and an amazing piece of engineering. This thing has seven motors in it. Uh, one motor for each track, another motor um, to steer the platform, and then four motors to control the scoop arm, which is just fairly ridiculous. So, um, of course, you have to get this and, and build it. So um, I was really excited to get this model. But the really neat thing about this one, let me bring it to the forefront here. Instead of showing to the box, let's go to the... Needs a lot of space. All right, here we go. There he is. Okay, so um, so now with this is Lego came out with a new um, a new motor design, but they also came out with their own Bluetooth controller, as well as app. So now, out of the box, Lego has their own app, kind of like Esprit does for the older um, Lego Technic models. So for this guy. Let's bring the app up for this one. And I'll bring it up on the screen so you can see it a little bit, a little bit better. So we'll connect to the Liebherr 9800 here. So it has, since it has seven motors, each, um, it, each Bluetooth controller controls up to four different devices. So there are actually two Bluetooth controllers in here. So you first turn on the top one, the top here, and then it connects. And then after that one, you turn on the bottom one. And then on the app here, it's connecting to that second Bluetooth controller. And now once it's all um, once it's all connected, we can control the various arms going up and down. And then we can control the tracks going backwards and forwards. I mean, it's just really just, just really impressive stuff. So we'll exit out of here. Okay, so uh, so then I put this one together with the help of Cassie, my wife, and we actually have a good video up online of uh, of putting this together in uh, in uh, short motion or fast motion uh, to uh, to narrow it down. It took days to put together, but anyway. So now we've got um, three different models. So I decided to. Since this one um, had the Bluetooth model and also had new motors in it, and the cool thing about the new motors for this one versus the older Technic model is that these motors are called taco motors, which means I can control the number of revolutions that the motor turns. That means I can calibrate where the arm is in space and then X number of like 5,000 rotations of the motor will open the the main arm this way, all the way up in 5,000 rotations the other way. So I always know where it is in space. That's important for the for my programming such that I can then do an automatic scoop pattern because I know where each of the motor positions are, which then tell me where each of the arm positions are with that. So what I decided to do is, okay, program this as well as the dump truck and have this scoop up the balls and dump them into the dump truck. So off I went with my uh, some more programming because I needed to figure out now the Bluetooth protocol of the Lego, which is a lot more complicated than the Esprit stuff. So that took a lot of time to figure out. Luckily, Lego uh, publishes their Bluetooth protocol, but it's a bit of a challenge to kind of get through it. But I did, and um, and then once I got that done, did a lot more programming stuff, and I'll have a separate videos on all the programming and kind of how I broke this into an object-oriented uh, solution in the software. But uh, until then, let's actually see all this stuff in action and hopefully it works. All right, let's do this. So let's run down what we've got here. So we've got our dump truck here with the color code on it. We've got the Liebherr 9800 excavator and that's got its color code. And then over here, this is what I call the ball depot 
and that's got its color code. So those are the three things on the floor. And then if we look up at the ceiling here, Velcro to the ceiling fan, gotta love Velcro, is the Pixie camera. And that has its little Bluetooth um, controller here along with the Arduino board. And all of those things, so the Pixie camera and the excavator and the dump truck are communicating over here with the computer. So if I pop out of here, and I apologize for the crappy user interface, but um, I'll be cleaning this up later. But the little dots here show uh, where each thing is. The red is the excavator, green is the dump truck, and orange is the depot there. And things will start, lines will start moving around as the Lego models move around on the floor there. And then on the left-hand side here, this is the data getting from the Pixie camera. And you can kind of see it coming in here. And there's three things of data, 10, 11, and 19. Those are kind of ID codes for the three different things, the Ball Depot and the two Lego things. All right, so what's gonna happen here? Well, what should happen here is the excavator should move over to the Ball Depot, scoop up some balls, and then the dump truck should pull up to the left side of the excavator and the excavator will dump the balls into the bed of the dump truck and then the dump truck will back up a little ways and then raise its bed and dump the balls on the floor. That is what should happen in theory. <laughs> All right, let's do this.
Okay, that is a wrap of the LEGO Technic automated construction site. A um, couple of notes before uh, we close out the video. Just on the dump truck here, the one thing I added was this uh, little block right here, and this is called a tilt sensor. Since on this model, I can't count the number of revolutions that the motor's turning, I'm not quite sure where the, the bed is in the up or down position. So this uh, tilt sensor by Lego connects into s -brick, and then I can measure the tilt. So that's how I know when to stop it in the up position and then stop it when it goes all the way down. Okay, so uh, finally the things I'm gonna be working on next is um, kind of pushing the envelopes of the Pixie camera. The resolution when it's all the way up on the ceiling, you know, isn't the best. So I got a fair amount of errors that come in as far as the angle of the, uh, of the color codes and kind of their positioning. So I'm kind of pushing the envelope with this. So I might think about changing this out uh, or coming up with a different plan for a camera to give me better, better resolution of everything. So I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna work on the user interface of the software I've put together. And then I'm gonna put that up on uh, a service called GitHub. That's for all those nerdy folks out there. It's a place uh, folks can post all their code and for other people to look at. So I wanna put that up there at some point so other folks can play around with what I've done. And the next thing, of course, there's always the next thing to do is gonna be this. So here is the new model that uh, Lego just came out with. So it's the, uh, a new dump truck, the A60H. So similar to the uh, one I had before, but it's a twin axle, bigger bed. And the cool thing about this one is it's got the new Lego motors and Lego Bluetooth hub. So I'll be able to do a lot more accurate steering and positioning the, the dump bed and all that fun stuff with this. So uh, an upcoming video on the construction of this and then integrating it into our robotics platform. All right, so that's it. And I'll leave you with a bunch of funny outtakes. Catch you later.